haters, beta leftists are trying to drive a wedge between me and my true friends by calling me a racist. The reason I got called out on this is because I'm true to the science. I won't, you know, give the politically ans correct answer just for the fucking sake of it. I will still be true to what I believe. And then people will call me racist to discredit me. That's fucking dishonest. Scientific racism is the belief that you can prove on scientific grounds that certain ethnic groups are superior to others. People who hold this point of view call themselves race realists. Well, a race realist would be more suitable. In this video, I'll delve into the science to see what it's actually saying. To begin, the consensus of most anthropologists is that race isn't a scientifically useful concept. But I'll talk hypothetically for convenience. So what a lot of race realists do is they look at the mean IQ of white Americans and they compare it to the mean IQ of African Americans, which they find to be about 15 points lower. And they take that as evidence that blacks are dumber than whites for genetic reasons. I'll get into IQ later, but this is a shallow assessment of the racial IQ gap because it's a univariate analysis. Like if you're a social scientist, worth, worth your salt, you never do a univariate analysis. In other words, you're taking the differences between two groups, in this case the IQ differences between African Americans and white Americans, and attributing those differences to one variable, in this case, race. But this neglects all the other variables. Income, net worth, access to education, health, epigenetics, integrity of the family, racism, cultural differences, the after effects of slavery and Jim Crow laws. The significance of these confounding variables is undeniable. Some race realists, however, uh, acknowledge the existence and sometimes even significance of these confounding variables, but maintain that Racial genetic differences are still the main influence on the IQ gap. A race realist linked me to a website called Library of Hate, which compiles so-called hate facts. Most of the links merely point out racial differences that are highly confounded by environmental variables, like the aforementioned racial IQ gap, but some links actually sounded persuasive. For instance, of 324 Chinese researchers, 100% believe race is biologically real. Unfortunately, this link was broken. Despite my efforts, I couldn't find this claim anywhere else on the internet. Genes for large brains, linked to high IQ, are common everywhere except Africa. This one linked me to a Wall Street Journal article, which was behind a paywall. After some investigation, I found out that the creator of this study eventually found no relation between the genes he studied and intelligence, but the damage was already done. Jews, blacks, and women were instrumental in turning the scientific consensus against the validity of race. Well, this is the exact same broken link as the fabricated Chinese researchers study. Definitely no bias here. If you examine closely, some of the studies contradict evidence of race causing the gap. For instance, IQ is 75% heritable among whites. The implication, I guess, being that IQ is less heritable among blacks. Yet another broken link. However, high socioeconomic standing individuals, which is to say, on average, whites, are more likely to be able to develop their full biological potential because they're less impeded by environmental factors. Black college students have poorer grades than students of other races with the same IQ. Well, if you control for IQ, there shouldn't be these differences. And yet there are, indicating there are environmental factors impeding African Americans. Even after adjusting for SAT scores, blacks have worse college grades than whites. Likewise, if you consider SAT IQ by proxy, the same thing is going on here. Also, both of these links go to the same study, which has nothing to do with those claims. The terrible quality of evidence on the site may be extending to dishonesty, reminds me of a debating strategy called the Gish Gallop, where you overwhelm your opponent with as many arguments as possible with regard for neither their accuracy nor their strength. The unfortunate person on the receiving end can't possibly comb through all the claims, which is seen as defeat to some. So uh, if you want to accuse me of cherry picking your worst links, Mr. Librarian of Hate, 
I'm sorry, but you'll just have to do a more professional job of your sources. The only study that I believe might lend support to the genetic argument is the Minnesota transracial study, where black kids adopted by white families had lower IQs than white kids adopted by white families. But there were still confounding variables. For instance, the black kids, on average, were adopted much later than the white kids, and several participants dropped out of the study. Also, you shouldn't draw broad conclusions from just one study, especially when the surrounding literature, like all the other transracial adoption studies, demonstrates otherwise. Even the researchers themselves said conclusions couldn't be drawn from the study. After all this, it seems that there are just too many confounding variables to say anything definitive about the effects of race on IQ, which is a stance supported by substantial scientific literature. You don't rule out the possibility, but at the end of the day, even with the vast environmental disparities between African Americans and white Americans, the mean African American IQ is still within one standard deviation of the mean white American IQ. So. I imagine even if you could control for confounding variables, which would be insanely hard, um, even if a gap existed at all, I doubt it would be significant. Also, don't forget, we're just measuring IQ. IQ admittedly is a good predictor of things like income and health, but it's an incomplete picture of intelligence. It doesn't measure things like wit, social skills, musical gifts, creativity, strategic planning, maturity, etc. Low IQ individuals can be astonishingly gifted at certain things. Likewise, high IQ individuals can be train wrecks, or at least unintelligent in living their lives. <sighs> if you aren't motivated to look into the science, the race realist can sound persuasive, but upon scrutiny, their arguments are more an expression of wishful thinking than science. So this shit fucking actually like makes my skin crawl.